Welcome back to Boston Public Radio. I'm Mark Regan, Jim Browdy, live at the Boston Public Library and streaming at youtube.com slash GBH News. We're now joined by GBH's executive arts editor. That would be Jared Bowen. Hello, Jared Bowen. Hello. Hey. So, Jared Bowen, I am really fascinated by what's going on at the Armedia Museum of America, not, not just by the art, but by this couple, uh, 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 Joan and Jack Quinn. Uh, and I guess back in the 70s through 90s out in California, they were sort of, he, he's an attorney and she was the muse and the one with the eye for art. One of these stories it talks about how she had this great sensibility for picking artists and how most people don't have that kind of sensibility. So tell us about the two of them and tell us particularly about her. Yeah, so there are a couple. Uh, he has since passed away, and they, in the, as you mentioned, in the 60s, 70s, and on, they were out in California, and we had very great lives. He was an attorney. They lived in the, the house that uh, Oliver Hardy, Hardy and Ed Sullivan lived in in Beverly Hills. But during that time they were there, they were so attuned to the art community, and they befriended tons of artists and supported them and championed them. She was somebody who was an editor for some of the Condé Nast publications and interview magazines, so then Warhol came into the picture. And so they had this great artist circle. But again, when all of these artists were really young, we'll flash forward decades, and a lot of them are blue chip artists now, like Warhol, like Basquiat, like uh, David Hockney. And so they amassed this tremendous collection that you can now actually see at the Armenian Muse Museum of America, uh, which is in Watertown, Massachusetts, of course. And you can see what they collected. But this was also such an interesting time because out in California, this was a group of artists who were breaking away from the New York and European hotbeds of art. And, and they were doing their own thing. They were looking at light. They were using different materials like automotive paint. And it was just about exploration. And then you had these great supporters like the Quins who could, uh, again, support and championing champion them by their work and introduce them to others and uh, and do what they did. And the but connection is she was Armenian. She, she is it's Armenian. It's her heritage. She yep. is, okay. Exactly. But it sounds to me like, and correct me if I'm wrong, that she was able to see great talent, um, I, you know, uh, it, 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 in an unusual way because a lot of these artists that she picked out early on became, as you said, blue chip artists and superstars. Well, I think it's a combination. Certainly, they both had good eyes. And I should mention he was an attorney, but he also used that for good, helping artists who don't necessarily have the business prowess yeah. when, when you're, you're trying to focus your life on your art. But they had, they, they had a way of seeing people. And I think that's what resonates when I saw this collection. That Yeah, now, decades later, you realize, well, of course, they knew who they were collecting because they they're so, became so successful and famous, but you also know that this was collected with emotion, that they wanted to help these people, they wanted to support them, but at the same time, they were fine-tuning their eye as this new form of art was developed. By the way, there is one hilarious story that the curator oh, shared tell. with me, uh, or I should say he's the executive director of the museum. Uh, you'll see a, pay, uh, a, a drawing of Joan Quinn's hands, her jewelry-laden hands. It's being done by Basquiat, as apparently she was talking to Warhol, and as she has just passed some joints that were, had been left at their house by Divine, you know, <laughs> the, the staple of John <laughs> oh Waters' God. films. So this was also kind of an artist circle in life they all had. The other really fun part of this is that it became a thing after a while to paint Joan's portrait. And so you have a small side exhibition within this larger exhibition of all of these artists just painting her in all manner, if you're from minimalist to abstract to anime, and you just, because people were so focused, she's a very beautiful woman, and uh, and then to have all of these different artistic uh, interpretations of her just adds to I think this allure of this this love of the arts. Where is the Armenian Museum in Watertown? It's right uh, right off of Watertown Square. Oh, it is.